friends, I hope you are doing well. This is my April update. Is that how I name these things? May update. This is the one that I would normally do at the beginning of May. Today's the 29th of April and it's finally feeling like autumn here. Our summer has extended so long. Yeah, I'm going to sit here and talk about the weather for a moment. Um, like so many of you guys in the Northern Hemisphere have had such long winters, I know, I've seen on Instagram. The snow does look gorgeous, but I'm sure it's frustrating by now. Um, yeah, our summer has just lasted forever. Um, so I am definitely excited to um, be finally feeling like autumn. It's currently like 16 degrees Celsius. It's gorgeous. Perfect day for sitting out in the sun. Not that I have a place at my home that I can do that, unfortunately. One day I'll have a lovely garden I can sit outside in the sun and crochet or knit. Um, not today though. Today I have my coffee in my mug. It says, let's taco about it. And it has a taco on it. <laughs> mm. So, a couple of things first, the blur along is going really well. If you are not involved in our group on Ravelry, head over to Earl Grey Crochet Community where you can see all the lovely photos of uh, everyone's blurs they've been making. There's a chatter thread and a finished objects thread. So if you are finished your blur soon, make sure you post that in the finished objects thread. Um, I'll leave it open until um, I know that, you know, even in the US and stuff, the 30th of April is finished, just so that everyone you know, has enough time. So that'll probably be about Tuesday, Australian time, if you're in Australia. Um, and I'll probably give out some prizes for that later. I'm not sure when I'll get a chance. This week my work schedule is a bit unusual. I'm doing some afternoon shifts and then some nine to fives, which I don't normally work nine to five. Um, and it means I don't have half a day to crochet. It just seems weird. I'll probably still get up early and crochet before work. But I normally work either finish at 3.30 or earlier or start at like 2 p.m. most of the time. So that gives me most of a day to crochet or at least a lot of a day to crochet, which is nice. So I have been doing lots of crochet this month. Um, feels like maybe I haven't looking at my um, works in progress and finish objects, but I have, I swear I have. Um, so. My first finished object I don't have here, like I was telling you last time, it's my woodland blanket. I finally finished weaving on all the ends and I did a little border on it and I gifted it to my grandma for her birthday last weekend. So these are all the little ends I collected in a jar <laughs> just to, you know, remind me of that blanket for the moment. I'll probably just use these to stuff like a migurumi at some point, um, obviously that's not going to stuff very much or maybe like stuff ahead but anyway if you watch my video about my knit crate you would have already seen i finished my blur shawl i finished this one in record time um pretty much over the first weekend of the crochet along because on good friday uh, i didn't have work because it's public holiday and i pretty much went to church in the morning and then came home and started crocheting about midday i uh, did a few things in the evening including like a video chat with some friends of mine and yeah so I pretty much just crocheted all of that time from about midday until midnight so on good friday I got up to so we started up here and then I got up to about here so that's quite a lot got up to introducing my fourth color but yeah I really love this shawl it's gorgeous and yeah another reason I'm excited it's finally autumn. I can't really put it on with my jumper. Oh, I forgot to say what I'm wearing. This is my color block jumper. It's um, a, it's my color block jumper by Clay Heaton. I was gonna use the Clay Heaton yarn, but Spotlight didn't have it. Um, so this is using Peyton's Extra Fine Merino, which now Spotlight doesn't stock that either, which is sad. Um, but it's gorgeous. I'm going to be super paranoid about leaving the house in it because it's expensive yarn that um, easily catches on things. Um, yes, I do like it with this collar. I think I have to get a couple more like 
cute little collared shirts to wear with it. <laughs> and I really want to like either make or knit just a solid mustard jumper. There was a mustard jumper in a shop here that I nearly bought like on a few different occasions but it wasn't actually quite what I wanted. I want, yeah, like something kind of maybe knitted or crocheted or something like that. But this one is just like one of those hoodie sloppy joe ones with a hood. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really enjoying this one and I can finally wear it. Um, so that's really exciting. But yeah, I'm gonna have to buy some big colored shirts because I think this looks real cute. I like the lace collar. This top is actually like, um, just got the lace collar and then it's like a sheer kind of tank top which I like wearing in summer with a singlet underneath um, but now I can wear it in winter too I'll probably wear another shirt underneath this because otherwise like the breeze will just blow through all the holes I don't know if I told you guys but years ago when I first started crocheting I bought some wool because a pattern recommended a specific wool as opposed to like acrylic yarn um, and it's a shrug and I cannot wear it without like a few like a layer of clothing underneath I can't have it touching my skin so when I have worn it I've worn like a long sleeve top and then I wore a jumper as well and like a light kind of scarf around my neck not like a crochet or knitted scarf just a fabric one um, and then I wore the shrug just to like for a bit of insulation really but the wool, I can't stand the wool, and so for years I wouldn't buy wool because I thought I didn't like it. Turns out I just don't like cheap wool. It's scratchy. Because yeah, this is wool, and it's gorgeous. 75% wool and 25% nylon. The first two colours have cashmere in them as well. I'm sure you've heard me talk enough about where all this yarn is from, but I'm just going to say it again. These two colours are from Saltwater Yarns. This blue and this purple, which are gorgeous, are from Circus 20 Handmade. And this one is from Mahogany Turtle. Just lovely. And this is also 100% merino wool. It's gorgeous. So I've got something else that's sort of a finished object. The other day I was looking for something to work on. On Friday I was worked f at work from 5am to 12.30. And so often I'll just come home and sit on the couch and spend all afternoon trying not to fall asleep. Um, which really frustrates me because then I just feel like I'm wasting time. I don't know what other people spend all of their time doing because if I were not crocheting or knitting, I just feel like I'm, yeah, wasting my time doing nothing. I suppose people actually go out and socialize with friends. That's what my husband said. They apparently don't do that very much. Anyway, so on Friday, I finally picked up this book. Like, I've had it for months, but I finally decided to pick it up and actually make something from it. So this is Round and Round the Crochet Hook by Emily Littlefair on Instagram. She's the Loopy Stitch. And you may remember a few months ago, if you've watched some of my older videos, I made Connie's Ray of Hope, and Emily also designed that, and she ran the crochet along for it. And, yeah, this book is gorgeous. Like, the idea is mostly these... I think these are all like mandala type designs and they're all round hence the round the round like crochet hook so there's a blanket there's like i think that one's a cushion and there's a placemat and there's little coasters and all sorts of other little motifs you could even use for anything and here's the back i'll show you the back of this gorgeous yeah see she's got these two blankets they're the same blanket just in different colors and i think she lists all the yarn she's used for it she uses mostly um the natural cotton in um a few different sizes so there's the XL one which is this project and I haven't used the Natura Cotton XL I have used the Natura Cotton for a project but I pulled that out and I still need to use the yarn for something else because it is lovely yarn um, oh it's DMC Natura Cotton DMC is the brand um, but yeah I'll show you like just some of the photos from the beginning that has like the contents and stuff. So these are gorgeous. And if you want to get this book, I'll put a link to Amazon down below. Um, and that'll be an affiliate link, so I will earn a small commission from that if you are interested. And that would be a great way to support my little channel that's slowly growing. Um, and yeah, look, there's some gorgeous patterns in here. I really like that this content just has all the pictures and the page number. So you just pick a picture. And go to that page number. So, 
I picked these lovely little coasters. And they are on page 44. Oh yeah, so here's all the instructions for the blanket. You can't actually see that there. It has very detailed instructions about all that. Let's see, there's one of her cushions. The cushion covers. And here are the coasters. So, yeah, I made some of these. I just picked out a few colors of my um, stash. This is um, Motovira Gelato, and it's, I think, 50% cotton, 50% acrylic, or something like that, maybe 45, 55. And so I did three different arrangements of the colors. Um, yeah. And one of the things I love about this book is Emily's made up these, she has written instructions for everything, but she has gorgeous charts. I love charts. So I'll just show you a bit of that. Look. And if you can't read a chart, there's instructions to help figure out what the chart means. But also there's always a key with the chart. So I think that's pretty easy. If you know what the stitches are, so she has here, you know, this is a half double. There's what, a double crochet and then, you know, some bobbles. And if you don't know what that means, she does have written instructions over here. She has written instructions for how to actually do each of the stitches, but I just find graphs and charts are so much easier to follow because you can just visualize it and see if you're doing it right. Of course, you need to sit there and count like how many stitches are actually in there, especially for that first round. After that, you kind of just, you know, follow it. Is it every stitch? Is it every second stitch? Um, the first time I did it, I missed a stitch in the first round and didn't realize until I got to the final round. Um, and that wasn't because I didn't count the stitches in the pictures, because I didn't count the stitches properly in my work. So, yes. Yeah, so, if you're gonna make some gorgeous projects and follow some charts, you don't have to follow charts. As I said, there's written instructions as well. There's the coasters. So yeah, I just picked my colors kind of based on this. I was like, cool, she used cream and blue and brown. What colours do I have? Oh look, I have some dark blue and brown and white. That'll do. And actually, it worked out a lot better than I thought. Um, I'll probably make some more things from this. We have a wedding we're going to in a couple of weeks and I have no idea what to get these people for a gift because I actually don't know them very well. Um, they're relatives and I think it's pretty cool they've decided to invite us to their wedding anyway because um, we don't spend a whole lot of time together, unfortunately. By which I mean I haven't seen them in years. Um, so maybe I'll make some things from that book. Maybe a different colour scheme to this. Um, or slightly different. I'm not sure about the blue. Um, I do like the white. I might just do solid white something. We'll see how we go. But I think that would make a nice gift. Maybe. Maybe it's a set of placemats or something. So I've got a couple of works in progress. Um, they're actually both knitted. So remember a few months ago, well earlier this year I made my first half of buff scarf, obviously I still have ends to deal with. I'm still going to sew up the end of the tube on both ends just to neaten it up a bit. Um, this one I did on bamboo double pointed needles, 5.5mm from Spotlight. Because um, I wanted a set of 5 and that's why I used the bamboo ones. And the bamboo ones also have actually a labelled with what size they are, which is great. But, if you watch my knit crate video, I last... Two weeks ago, went to Skein Sisters up in Sydney, and it's a yarn shop, and they also have um, Chow Goo needles. So I decided to start up my collection of Chow Goo needles, and they are, I'm using their interchangeable circular needles, and so I've started using them for a second half buff scarf, because Matt wanted one as well. That's my husband. Um, and this is working really well. I had tried to do this originally on some circulars, but from Spotlight. Um, the circulars were too long, but also I've had trouble with the circulars from Spotlight with just getting like that change between where the cable is and where the needle is. The stitches won't go over it easily in the needles you pick up at Spotlight. The Chagu ones are beautiful. As you can see, I haven't made a heap of progress on this. This is mostly just my easy project that I can take with me. So I'll probably work again on this at church tonight. Yes, I knit or crochet during church sermons. Keeping my hands busy keeps my brain awake. 
So, yep. What I'm also doing with this one, I don't know how good of a technique it was, but instead of cutting the yarn, I just kind of like would keep the gray yarn from there when I finished and then join it when I did that. So there's like a strand of each color, like going down, like there's the gray. And then I've just tied the mustard, yellow, gold, whatever it is off there. The yarn I'm using this for this is um, Lion Brand Heartland. And I think there's a Grey Smoky Mountain and Shenandoah. And so, what I'm doing for this, I actually forgot once. But, so Chantel over at Fiberific has a tutorial in her um, rainbow sock. So she has a video tutorial series for a rainbow sock. And it's like a grey sock with rainbow stripes all along it. And it's very cool. Um, and the tutorial like shows you a few things, including like how to do a jogless stripe so that you can't see where you started a new color. I'll just see if I can, oh yeah. So where I start the new color is under this. So, somewhere around there. And somewhere around there. Can you tell? No, you can't see. It just looks like it goes straight across. So I've been using her tutorial to do that, which is cool. Also, to kind of, I've been cutting the yarn and weaving in the ends a little bit when I remember. I don't think I've remembered every time. Oh, maybe I have. Yeah, so I've kind of weaved in each of the ends along there as I do it. So this is where I've changed color, but then my ends come out over here. So that's where I changed color underneath the stitch marker. And yeah, this is where the ends come out. So I've been weaving them in, which is cool. Um, using Chantel's tutorial, I will link that down below as well. She's over there at Fiberific. And she actually has a website as well where she sells hand-dyed yarn and chagu needles and lots of other bits and pieces. She sells stuff for spinning yarn and all sorts of things. Her website's actually been down at the moment or recently, so I'm not sure if that's back up. But definitely check out her YouTube channel. She does like live streams on YouTube every so often. Um, anyway, yes, and she's great. So for this, I'm using five and a half millimeter um, Chagu needles. These are the four inch ones, I think, rather than the five inch ones. And it's on a 20 inch, nope. It's on an eight inch or 20 centimeter circular cable. Um, and that's actually working really well for me. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so my last work in progress is also knitted. It's also one of my new Chagu needles. As I said last time in my knit crate video, this cable is probably way too long. I, I've asked Matt to get me some more Chagu needles. Um, I forgot to mention in the beginning, May is the best month, obviously, because it's my birthday on the 7th. So that's why Matt will be hopefully getting me more Chagu needles. But I don't think he's ordered them yet. And well, the 7th is like a week away. So, yes. I actually probably won't see him on my birthday because he goes to college on Mondays and Tuesdays. And was, like, he was like, oh, do you want me to come back? And I was like, nah. He wouldn't get back until like 9 o'clock at night. And then he has to get on the train at 6 a.m. the next day. That's just a bit silly. Anyway, back to this. This is my Chloris from Knit Crate. So, this is what... It'll look like in the end, but obviously not yellow and green, but shades of red. And I'm really enjoying this. It's like got sections of seed stitch and sections of garter stitch. And oh, it's just perfect for practicing all the stuff I've got to practice. There's knit front and back, there's a slip stitch and a bind off over here. Yeah. And also I've been practicing putting <laughs> Um, my needle back through old rows, like when I make a mistake, because I'm too chicken to just frog, like just frog it, just rip out the stitches and undo it like I would with crochet, because it's so much harder to find where you're up to with knitting. Instead, what I've done a few times, yeah, a few times, um, when I've made a mistake, I'll like run the circular needle back through a row and pick up all the stitches and then I'll undo it from the top. And that's worked pretty well. And yeah, I've been practicing figuring out what side of the stitch I need to pick up, and which is good because yeah, 
Um, I want to knit socks eventually and I've been thinking about like the afterthought heel and I think you have to pick up the stitches for that. Um, I'm just pulling out a purple hair here from my scarf because, you know, that happens. Um, oh, I do actually have another work in progress and it's crochet. This one is has been hanging around for a while. So yeah, I started this one ages ago. I actually promised it to someone and... It's my Call the Midwife diamond blanket. I'm just looking at it now. I've got a feeling I've made a mistake. Yeah. Oh no, that's the bottom. It's fine. There we go. That's, that's where it, the edge I'm working on. So yeah, I pulled this out um, of my stash. This is where I marked where I started just this month. So I've worked all of this in the last month and this is everything I'd done before. So I'm using um, Peyton's Dreamtime Full Ply for this in cream. They're not all the same dye lot. Um, not sure if you can tell right now. You can tell sometimes, but it's working okay. Okay, so this is a combination of the Call a Midwife blanket, which is that section, and like a diamond pattern, which is actually the one I'm using is from a bag. And I got this idea from Gwen who is Stitch Gwen on Instagram and yeah she got it from someone else and so it's just a combination of these two patterns. You can see more details on my Ravelry Projects page about where to find the information for both of those. The um, diamond part is actually, I think it's written in Dutch but there's a chart. It's definitely not written in English. There's a chart so if you can read a chart or teach yourself how to read a chart you can do that. But yeah I've linked those in my project page and you can find them. I'll put a link to my project page down below for this one. Um, actually I might put more detailed show notes over on my blog and then that'll... you figure it out. There'll be links down below. <laughs> so yes, and what I've been doing is this is excellent because I put it down for so long. I have this little ball of yarn, which I think that's going to be backwards won't it? and it says three millimeter and it's orange so it matches my clover hook which is orange and three millimeters which is exciting i love my clover hooks yeah so here's my um three millimeter little ball of yarn a stitch marker that i made from like trinket ink plastic and colored pencils and here's my three millimeter clover crochet hook i've heard in the us you guys don't have three millimeter hooks that often which is bizarre but anyway yeah so oops always dropping things there it is i think that matches pretty well so I've d i made a few of these actually in a few different sizes but this is one i've used the most pretty much just because i've had it attached to this project since i made it um so yeah currently using that as like a progress keeper is what it's called so i know how far i've worked since i picked it up again Although I could probably tell because my tension has changed dramatically. Actually, you maybe can't tell there, but if you fold it, you can tell. I can tell. It doesn't matter if you can't tell, but I can tell. That's the important thing, right? Okay. Because I got distracted remembering I had another um, work in progress, I forgot to say, with the knit crate, if you want to order it, you can get 20% off, as I said in my knit crate video, you can get 20% off using my link, which I'll share down below, and the code EARLGRAY20. Make sure you put that code in and you'll get 20% off and make sure you use my link. And that'll help me earn a small amount of money, which is lovely. This, of course, isn't my regular job. I have a full-time job, but I would like to make crochet, um, crocheting and crochet designing and that sort of thing slightly more of... A thing I can do more regularly especially hopefully once um, Matt is currently studying but maybe once he starts working we could do in a different arrangement but anyway you don't need to know all the details knit crate if you order before the end of April you can get the golden hour box this is one of the boxes this is the membership box or membership crate um, they are a few others which I've shown images of in my knit crate video which you can watch and you can yeah, if you order before the end of April, you can get the golden hour themed boxes. If you order in May, you will get the May box, which will be different. 
So you can order at the beginning of May and get a surprise, or you could hang out until I get my box and I'll show you what I get. Next month I am getting the Artisan Sock Crate box, which has some sock yarn and a sock pattern. And that will be knitting as well. This one, the Knit Crate box, comes with the crochet pattern. The crochet pattern was also gorgeous. I just decided that maybe I'll save that pattern for some different yarn, um, and so I'm making the knitted pattern. So. And the crate has instructions to download both of these patterns from Ravelry. Um, and there's a code that makes it free when you get the crate. I think you can also buy them just straight out. So yeah, if you want one of these, one of the um, golden hour boxes from March. Nope, not March. March was a long time ago. If you want one of the golden hour boxes from April, order before the end of April. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. If you want a surprise, order at the beginning of May. I'm looking forward to my next box, see what's in it, see what the sock artisan sock crate is like, um, and I'll be able to show you guys that. Um, I've also been thinking, I've got lots of things I'm thinking of, using some of this yarn, because I have a whole bunch, but I'm going to need to buy more, and I'm not sure how Spotlight, because this is Peyton's, this is the Peyton's Extra Fine Merino that they've stopped stocking, and this is the Peyton's Dreamtime 4-ply. I'm not certain they still have it, but I need more because I've started working up a little swatch that might turn into a design soon. I'm not going to show you because I want it to be a surprise. Um, but I need more of this yarn. This is like, this is a four ply or a fingering weight yarn, depending on, you know, what you want to call it, or a sock weight yarn. I think that's the same thing. I never know. It's so confusing because the US and the UK and Australia all kind of seem to refer to different things. Australia refers to plies, which is kind of dumb because a ply is usually how many threads are twisted together, but in Australian yarn weights, it's usually not. So like, this is eight ply, but um, I've no idea how yarn works. <laughs> anyway, I do like the Peyton's yarn. They make lovely yarns. But I think they've recently had a change in ownership. Um, the Australian wool mill or something like that. There's been a change of ownership of Australian yarns recently. And so I think that maybe has to do with the different yarns that Spotlight is stocking. They've brought in some gorgeous Abbey Road range, which I want to get some of their cotton. And the cotton, I think, is like maybe a 10-ply, which is like... A worsted weight or an Aran weight? I have no idea how the US... That's so confusing. The one thing I do like about the pliers is it just goes up and you know a 10 ply is thicker than an 8 ply. That's obvious, right? Whereas I know a DK is an 8 ply, a double knit. Then there's... I think then there's worsted weight is like a 10 ply and an Aran weight is a 12 ply. I could just look this up, but I don't know. And then I think between bulky and chunky, they change between the US and the UK as well, so. Who knows? What was I talking about? Yeah, I've been designing a thing, so. Hang out for that. I'm really keen. I've been to get some patterns out. I've been going through some of all the scribbled notes I have through a few of my notebooks and in my phone. Um, I keep notes on my phone where I write up some patterns sometimes, and I really want to get those. Um, Written up correctly, I might get a few patent testers. That won't be happening soon, so don't tell me you want a patent test yet. I'll let you know when. Maybe on Ravelry. Um, I might set up a thread. I'll probably let you know other ways. But yeah, probably get some patent testers. Just like a couple for each pattern, because I've got a few. And then I'll format them all nicely and hopefully get them out. I have been thinking of trying to submit them to magazines. But I listened to a podcast yesterday from Be Hooked podcast, um, I think, where she talked to Selena someone. Anyway, it was interesting. They were talking about submitting things to crochet magazines, submitting designs. Um, and yeah, it was really interesting. I'm like, I figure I may as well just try to self-publish mine because... I feel like I have the skills that I can format them and make them nice looking. I have been going through all of the patterns that I have, like through the books, which is why my lounge room is now covered in all the crochet books that I own. 
and I've been going through all the digital patterns I own and just like making notes about what I like about each pattern, how they're formatted, the things they include, um, how they phrase each thing, because all of them are phrased slightly differently, even though they're all amigurumi, that's what I've been looking at. Um, everyone phrases it differently, which is really interesting. So I've been looking at, yeah, how I want to phrase it. So people, some people go into more detail, which if you know what you're doing, the more detail is not really necessary. But if you are a beginner, the more detail could be really helpful. I'm not sure. Um, so to be honest, I think I'm probably going to end up being a bit of a perfectionist about this and just making, this will take me a long time to get these patterns formatted the way I want. But perhaps once I have a, a template, it'll be easier to get more out. Like, so I'll do one and then I can use that template for other ones as well, for the amigurumi at least. The yarn that I'm, the project that I'm using this yarn for, however, is not a Megurumi. I have an idea and I've been really enjoying, I spent a few hours yesterday on Saturday, just like experimenting, putting different stitches together and a few different hook sizes and different ways to do the stitches and oh, it's so good. I've had this design in my head for a little while, kind of hanging around and I thought it would work one way, but actually playing with the stitches, it didn't quite work, but then I figured out a way to make it work and it's, I'm really excited. Um, I'm gonna stop talking about it and teasing you guys. So, yep. What else? With it being the end of April, um, I'm actually doing really well. In the past few years, I've kind of, I don't know, I've kind of been thinking I just kind of struggle through with motivation a lot throughout autumn and a little bit into winter, which I was kind of thinking was like um, seasonal affective disorder, if you've ever heard of that. I don't know. I think maybe I hear about things online and I'm like, I totally have that. But anyway, I've been doing a lot better this year and maybe that's for a bunch of reasons. Maybe it's because summer's been lasting longer. Um, so seasonal affective disorder, I mean, I haven't been diagnosed or anything. I've just read too much about it online probably. Um, it's mostly basically you know seasonal depression. Not that I am saying I have depression. I don't know. Anyway often I'll struggle with motivation and that sort of stuff throughout autumn but this year yeah I've been doing a lot better. Like I said maybe because summer's lasted a lot longer. Um, maybe because I've well not in the last month but before that I was exercising a lot more than I have before. Um, I've really cut down a fair bit on the sugar intake that I have. Um, like, I don't have sugar in my tea. I have, you know, maybe none, no sugar in my coffee. Or like, maybe half a teaspoon. So it's no sugar if Matt makes it, and it's half a teaspoon if I make it. Try not to eat too much, like, sweets and stuff like that. Um, and I can, I can tell if I've had too much sugar, like, I can feel it in my head. And I can feel it in my gut. That's probably too much information. I'm going to stop talking about my body. But yes, I'm doing well. I hope you guys are doing well as well. I hope everyone in the Northern Hemisphere is enjoying spring and the flowers and all that comes with that. And yeah, all the summery crochet projects, get out your cotton and make whatever. I mean, I got out cotton anyway. <laughs> I think I've been filming for like half an hour. That's a long time for me. I think that's long enough. And half the time I've just been spent. <clears throat> rambling. I'm pretty much just rambling now. Anyway, I have to go back to Spotlight because I know they do have a yarn sale and I have to see if this is on sale because I can't remember. I was in there the other day and the Abbey Road yarn was the only yarn that I thought about buying, but it wasn't on sale, so I just left without buying anything. But I'll see if the Peyton's Dreamtime Four Play is on sale. I do like this yarn. I like most of Peyton's yarn. Not cheap, but you know, I think it's worth it. They also have a Dreamtime Eight Ply, which I've used before, and I have a bit more of in grey. So I'll have to figure out something to make that with to make with that. Maybe, because I want to try with some of these circular needles I have, I want to try knitting some beanies, maybe. And I don't know if you've seen like 
You know those fur pom-poms you can put on beanies? There's like instructions online in different places where if you have some fur fabric, you can make the pom-poms yourself, which is great because before I've just bought them like when I see them at Kmart, I just buy and they're a key ring and then you have to unattach it from the key ring and attach it to your beanie. But years ago when I was in high school, I took a couple of sewing classes and in one of them we made a bear, like sewed a bear, a teddy bear. Like mine's like this big and um, I have some, I used fur that like, the fur is like an inch long. I don't know if that's an inch. It's real long. <coughs> and so I have a whole bunch left over, like maybe like this much. And I'm going to use that eventually <laughs> among all the 50 billion other things I'm going to do um, to make my own faux faux pom-poms. And then for Christmas, everyone will get knitted beanies with faux faux pom-poms. That makes sense for Christmas in Australia. This is why I should not live in Australia. So, I was, no, I don't know if I could live anywhere else. I already said I was going to stop talking. Now I'm going to stop talking. Check out the show notes. I'll link them down below. I'll also have a link to Emily's book, Round Around the Crochet Hook and The Knit Crate. If you want 20% off, sign up with that. And uh, use code Elgray20. And... Yeah, I hope you have a lovely week. I will hopefully in the next few weeks make a video about the prizes and the winners of the um, Blur Along. I also have other videos planned. I'm not going to talk about that. I've talked enough. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs>